हेलो वेलकम टू लेक्चर थार्टी वन अफ द कोर्स दिस इज लेक्चर नम्बर टेन अफ मड्यूल थ्री इन दिस लेक्चर उइ आर गोयिंग टू इनभेस्टिगेट द लिनियर रेसपन्स अफ द केविटी अफ्टो मेकानिकल सिस्टेम एराउंड द स्टेडी स्टेट देन उल स्टाडी द कन्टम लिमिट फर ग्राउंड स्टेट कुलिंग अफ द मेकानिकल असिलेटर सो लेट एस बिगिन In the last lecture, we started discussing the quantum regime of cavity octo mechanical system. We assumed that the resonance frequency of the mechanical mode is much smaller than the so-called free spectral range of the cavity, which ensures that we focus on only one mode of the optical cavity. And under that assumption, we wrote down the Hamiltonian quantum optical mechanical Hamiltonian for the system, and while we have written it, uh, we just consider the optical mode and the mechanical oscillator only, and the interaction between the optical mode and the mechanical oscillator comes due to the very tiny shift of the mechanical oscillator due to optical force, and this tiny shift is assumed to be much smaller than the cavity length. and this hamiltonian is written in the in a different form also who is uh, tells us that the equilibrium position of the mechanical oscillator gets shifted from its equilibrium position zero to uh, a non zero q value when uh, light and light or the light mode is present there then we can write this hamiltonian in terms of the creation and annihilation operator of the mechanical oscillator as well and we have written it uh, in that form after that we work out the eigen state and the eigen values of this hamiltonian it turns out that uh, and it is very easy to see that when there is coupling between the light and the mechanics the photon number gets conserved but uh, the phonon number is no longer conserved in fact uh, we can assume the eigen state for this uh, system in the presence of light when z is non zero to be a uh, direct product of the number state of the photon and the displaced number state of the phonons and by solving the eigen value equation and taking this parameter alpha to be this uh, we find that the ener energy eigen value for the system can be worked out to be this one and it tells something interesting it tells that this extra term that is coming uh, when there is coupling between the mechanics and the light is the energy lost by the optical oscillator due to its interaction with the mechanical oscillator and this is basically a product of the optical force into the displacement of the mechanical oscillator from its equilibrium position we also learned how to apply this the so called polariton transform and by using the polariton transform the hamiltonian can be converted into a different form and who is tells us uh, that uh, the phase peak by the light mode depends on the light intensity because of the presence of this term a dagger a which is the photon number so an an opto mechanical system is inherently nonlinear due to opto mechanical interaction till now we considered the optical mode and the mechanical mode only uh, but to get into a realistic scenario we have to consider the laser drive also because the fabry perot cavity is now externally driven by a laser with uh, frequency omega l and laser amplitude uh, omega drive and this hamiltonian can also be written in terms of the annihilation and creation operator of the mechanical oscillator and as you can see that in this hamiltonian there is explicit time dependence is there and to get rid of this time dependence we can go over to a rotating frame of reference and we can rewrite our hamiltonian in this rotating frame of reference in this particular form where this delta is the detuning parameter in terms of creation and annihilation operator of course you can write it in this form as well now using the heisenberg equation of motion and incorporating quantum noise uh, we can get the equation of motion uh, 
टाइम इवल्यूशन इक्वेशन फर दिरियास अपारेटर्स पजिशन मोमेंटम एंड द अपटिकल मोड एंड हियर एज यू कैन सी उव इनकोपर द कन्टम नइज दिस इज द लेंजेबिन नइज दैट उ डिसकाश आर्लियर इन प्रिभियास क्लास एंड गामा एम पी दिस पार्टिकुलर टर्म रेफार्स टू द मेकानिकल डेम्पिंग दिस गामा एम इज द मेकानिकल डेम्पिंग रेट and uh, this particular term is the noise that is entering into the optical uh, cavity and this uh, noise has zero mean as we know because these are uh, in nature these are lenzevin noise and also we are aware of the time correlation or the auto correlation function in the time domain as well as the in the frequency domain now you please note that these uh, quantum lenzevin equations here these are the quantum lenzevin equation these equations are non linear for example as you can see that the time evolution of the cavity mode operator a depends on the product q a here and this is the product of two operators so no exact analytical solutions to this quantum lenzevin equations are at the moment available so however we can find the steady state solution in exact algebraic form and uh, let us do that and to find the steady state solution for this position uh, momentum and the optical mode let us denote the steady state solution corresponding to q by q bar and uh, momentum variable p by p these are q bar p bar as a steady state solution and uh, corresponding to the operator a the steady state solution is say a bar what we are going to do we are going to just here make the left hand side of this lenzevin equations to be zero because in steady state there has to be zero and if we do that then as you can see for example uh, from this equation if q dot is equal to 0 immediately we can write that p bar is equal to 0 and also from the equation of motion uh, time evolution equation for the momentum operator from there we can write minus m omega m square q bar plus h cross z0 mod alpha bar square is equal to 0 uh, you see here it would be q bar in the steady state and a dagger a will become mod alpha square and p in the steady state it is 0 and because we have to take the average of that so this fluctuation if we take the average it is anyway going to be zero so from this equation we can immediately write uh, that q bar we can write it as h cross z0 mod alpha bar square divided by m into omega m square so this one expression we get and from the equation of motion for the optical mode in the steady state in the similar way we can write it um, Uh, let us uh, look at here from here we will see that we can write it in the following way let me uh, yes so what we can do is this say minus uh, actually it is plus i delta minus kappa by 2 alpha bar then we have the term i z0 alpha bar q bar plus omega drive is equal to 0 and from here we can write alpha bar is equal to omega drive divided by kappa by 2 minus i into delta plus z0 q bar this i can further write as very simply i will have kappa by 2 whole square plus delta plus z0 q bar whole square and in the numerator i'll have omega drive into kappa by 2 plus i into delta plus z0 q bar further i can write this 
in the following form if i take kappa by 2 out uh, in the both numerator and the denominator i'll have here kappa by 2 and here i'll have omega drive let me write the denominator first here i'll have 1 plus delta plus c0 q bar divided by kappa by 2 whole square and here i have in the numerator i have 1 plus i into delta plus z0 q bar divided by kappa by 2 if i now take say 10 phi tilde is equal to delta plus z0 q bar divided by kappa by 2 and omega drive if i now write it as its amplitude and its phase in this form say its phase is phi using this i can write alpha bar as it would be equal to uh, omega drive it's actually a mathematical trick i'm applying here you can do the calculation yourself you'll have one plus i 10 phi tilde and here you will have kappa by 2 1 plus 10 square phi tilde e to the power i phi and it's very simple to show that this is actually lead you to the term omega drive m modulus of omega drive divided by kappa by 2 and here you'll have cos phi tilde and this you can write it as e to the power i phi plus phi tilde now you can easily read out that cos phi tilde is nothing but because you know 10 phi tilde so you can make out what is cos phi tilde would be that would be equal to kappa by 2 divided by kappa by 2 whole square plus delta plus z0 q bar whole to the power half okay now using this we can write alpha bar as equal to omega drive modulus of omega drive divided by kappa by 2 whole square plus delta plus z0 q bar whole square to the power half and here you will have e to the power i phi plus phi tilde now if we uh, choose the phase of the drive such that phase of the drive phi such that it is equal to minus phi tilde which is actually equal to minus 10 inverse of delta plus z0 q bar divided by kappa by 2 then alpha would be a real quantity and alpha we can alpha bar we can write as omega drive divided by delta plus z0 q bar whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square to the power half so in this case alpha bar is now a real quantity and also you see the number of the number of intra cavity photon number of intra cavity photon is given by alpha bar square now we'll investigate the linear response of the optomechanical febripero around the steady state values which already we have found out and this is going to be a semi-classical approximation 
where we will write each dynamical variable for example this optical mode which is a dynamical variable and the mechanical oscillator variables the position of the mechanical oscillator and its momentum these are the dynamical variable and we are going to write it as a uh, sum of two parts one is the classical part that is the steady state value for example for the optical mode we can write a is equal to alpha bar plus its deviation uh, the time dependent quantum fluctuation part and the position operator of the mechanical oscillator its steady state value is q bar and its the corresponding quantum fluctuation is delta q and for the momentum of the mechanical oscillator its steady state value is p bar and the corresponding fluctuation quantum fluctuation is delta p and this delta a delta q and delta p they have zero mean quantum fluctuation and then if we insert uh, these quantities in our quantum Langevin equation let me write it again q dot is equal to p by m all these are operators so sometime i may not write it but you please understand that i am now talking about quantum operators here we have m omega m square q plus h cross z zero a dagger a minus gamma uh, this is gamma m it is gamma m p and the langevin noise xi and we have q dot is equal to uh, in fact q dot i have written already we have a dot a dot is equal to i delta minus kappa by 2 a i z 0 q into a plus omega drive and the uh, quantum noise that is root square root of kappa a in now if we put this uh, answers in this quantum langevin equation then we can write uh, you can easily show it you will get delta q dot is equal to delta p by m then all these are operators again and we have delta p dot is equal to minus m omega m square delta q plus h cross z zero and i will urge you to verify it it's very simple or otherwise maybe we can straight away show it in our problem solving uh, session as well but it's very straightforward it is delta a dagger delta a and we have minus gamma m delta p plus xi and for the optical mode the fluctuation is delta a dot is equal to i delta plus uh, the detuning parameter plus z0 q bar minus kappa by 2 delta a and i have i z0 alpha bar plus delta a delta q minus square root of kappa uh, will have a in here now you see since these fluctuations are assumed to be small we are going to retain uh, only those terms which are linear in the fluctuation so if we go to retain only the linear terms and then the terms which are bi bilinear for example delta a dagger delta a this is a bilinear term and the product of delta a delta q which you are going to encounter here for example delta a delta q this we have to uh, remove uh, because these are would be very f further small and uh, we will just concentrate into the uh, linear terms only then this is going to simplify our these Langevin equations corresponding to this fluctuation then we can write delta q dot so let me first write that what we are ignoring we are ignoring here uh, ignoring ignoring the nonlinear terms and that is why we are saying we are doing the linearization 
ignoring the nonlinear terms we get delta q dot is equal to delta p by m then delta all these are again operators delta p dot is equal to minus m omega m square delta q plus h cross z delta a plus delta a dagger minus gamma m delta p plus xi and we have here delta a dot is equal to i delta dash this is the modified detuning parameter or effective detuning parameter that i'm going to define soon minus kappa by 2 delta a plus i z delta q minus square root of kappa a in now here this parameter z is equal to z0 into alpha bar and this particular parameter z is termed as the linearized optomechanical coupling it is called linearized optomechanical optomechanical coupling for obvious reason it is also sometimes called multi-photon multi-photon optomechanical coupling optomechanical coupling because in the steady state coupling for example g0 uh, this is enhanced by the steady state uh, photon number uh, ns because alpha bar you see this is actually square root of the steady state photon number because mod alpha bar square gives the intensity and that is equal to the number of uh, photons in the cavity in the steady state so therefore you see that your uh, z0 is now getting enhanced by the amount by alpha bar and that's the reason this parameter z is called also as the multi-photon optomechanical coupling and this quantity delta dash which is the effective effective detuning this is called effective detuning and this is delta dash is equal to delta plus z0 into q bar so this set of equations uh, actually constitute the linearized quantum langevin equations for the optomechanical febripero cavity and it contains the full linear response of the system in fact this set of equations could be derived entirely in terms of creation and annihilation operators as well and to do that we are going to start with the hamiltonian where we write the whole hamiltonian in terms of only creation and annihilation operator in this form minus h cross delta a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b minus h cross z a dagger a into b plus b dagger plus i h cross omega this actually we have written earlier also so hope you are getting it it is a dagger minus a this is written exclusively in terms of creation and annihilation operators for the optical mode as well as the mechanical mode and from here we can as usual get the uh, heisenberg equation of motion for the optical mode and the mechanical mode a dot and b dot and you will get it as say i for the optical mode you will have i delta a plus i z a b plus b dagger um, plus omega drive uh, minus cup actually we have written it earlier minus kappa by 2 minus square root of kappa a in and for the mechanical mode you will have minus i omega m b plus i z a dagger a minus gamma m by 2 b minus square root of gamma m b e now here this is the quantum noise that is entering into the mechanical mode uh, mechanical substrate or the mechanical oscillator this is the damping of the mechanical damping now if we want to uh, linearize it so we can do that exactly by the same procedure that we have already adopted here a would uh, will write this an annihilation operator 
for the optical mode we will write it as two parts that is the steady state value and its deviation from the steady state value that is the quantum fluctuation part and for the mechanical mode also annihilation operator would be steady state value plus delta b okay so similar calculations we can actually carry out here also and this will lead us to these uh, equations for delta a and delta b for delta a it would be delta a dot is equal to i delta dash minus kappa by 2 delta a plus i z delta b plus delta b dagger minus square root of kappa a in and uh, for here by the way delta dash is equal to the effective detuning here would be delta plus z into beta plus beta star and uh, z is equal to that is the opto linearized optomechanical coupling here would be z plus alpha bar and delta b dot is equal to minus i omega m i request you to please do this yourself and please verify it whether i am writing it correctly here you have delta b plus i z uh, delta b plus delta b dagger minus square root of gamma m uh, b in the hamiltonian corresponding to this linearized regime can be written in this form that is h is equal to now we are going to term it as the linearized hamiltonian or rather we will simply write it as a simple h but you understand that now i am talking about linearized hamiltonian that would be minus h cross delta dash delta a dagger delta a plus h cross omega m delta b dagger delta b minus h cross z delta a plus delta a dagger into delta b plus delta b dagger so this is the linearized hamiltonian in the absence of damping and other quantum noise and you can verify whether this hamiltonian that i have written is correct or not just by applying the heisenberg equation of motion to get back these equations time evolution equation for the operator delta a and delta b uh, in the absence of the corresponding dampings and the quantum noise okay in fact in many cases or many a times people prefer to write delta a as simply a and delta b as b with the understanding that they represent the quantum fluctuations so if we do that then we can rewrite this linearized hamiltonian as h is equal to minus h cross delta dash a dagger a plus h cross omega m b dagger b minus h cross z a plus a dagger into b plus b dagger and here delta dash is equal to delta plus the optomechanical coupling constant linearized optomechanical coupling constant z into beta plus beta star and uh, here let me remind you that this z is related to uh, the capital Z and this is the alpha bar uh, what we are going to do that uh, this particular part is generally not that very uh, great so now onwards in the rest of the our treatment we are going to take delta dash to be nearly equal to delta and where you know that delta this detuning parameter is omega l minus omega zero where omega zero is the resonance frequency of the optical cavity the physics described by this linearized hamiltonian can be depicted schematically and uh, let me show you because in essence what we are having is we are having two oscillator one oscillator two harmonic oscillator one oscillator is due to the optical cavity and this is represented by the operator a and this oscillator has frequency oscillation frequency minus delta as you can see from here 
and uh, other oscillator is the mechanical oscillator and this is represented by the operator b and it has oscillation frequency omega m and uh, these two oscillators are coupled via this optomechanical coupling and this described by this coupling constant their coupling is described by this optomechanical linearized optomechanical coupling constant z also uh, you see that this mechanical oscillator it has a damping and it damps at the rate of gamma m and actually what happens is that uh, you know the quanta of these mechanical oscillators are called phonons and these phonons get uh, decayed to some kind of a substrate or some butt so it, you, we can term them as mechanical butt and they are at some finite temperature okay so they get decayed to this mechanical butt also the photons also has a dissipation constant as you know that this decay at the rate kappa and they decay into the environment which is uh, described by the so-called electromagnetic vacuum so this is electromagnetic vacuum and you know this electromagnetic vacuum is modeled as harmonic oscillator and they oscillate at optical frequency and because of that uh, electromagnetic vacuum is effectively at a temperature t is equal to zero so we have a situation that when uh, this delta is less than zero that means in that case minus delta would be greater than zero and we are going to have a positive optical oscillator and the mechanical oscillator is oscillating at frequency omega omega m and uh, it is as you know it is already connected to a mechanical bath at finite temperature so effectively speaking the mechanical oscillator is a hot oscillator and the optical oscillator is a cold oscillator so this would effectively bring down the temperature of the mechanical oscillator due to its coupling to the optical oscillator now uh, this is basically in a very simple way the principle behind uh, from this pictorial diagram it is clear that uh, this is how the mechanical oscillator gets cooled uh, due to its coupling to the optical oscillator when delta is less than zero it implies that omega l is less than omega zero and it physically means that the laser is red detuned and we are going to discuss considering the laser to be red detuned and because now we can achieve what is called ground state cooling of mechanical mechanical oscillator but because of quantum physics we will see that there is a limit to this cooling so we are now going to discuss quantum limit of ground state cooling of mechanical oscillator before i go on to discuss the quantum limit for ground state cooling of mechanical oscillator let me remind you why achieving ground state is of paramount importance it is important if we want to study quantum phenomena in macroscopic objects as you know the mechanical systems can be treated as harmonic oscillator and the adjacent energy levels of these harmonic oscillators are equally spaced and if we want to study the quantum feature of this massive uh, mechanical system or mechanical oscillators uh, then the discreteness of the energy levels has to be there and it will be there provided the energy due to the thermal fluctuation which is kbt it's much much smaller than the energy spacing that is h cross omega m uh, that already we know so uh, so this is extremely important and this is why we uh, need to cool the mechanical oscillator to a very low temperature in terms of uh, phonon picture this actually says that it amounts to saying that the number of phonons or the average number of phonons has to be very very 
uh, small we can get a the as if the ground state provided the average number of phonons is too small however as we'll see that uh, because of quantum mechanics it is not possible to lower the average number of photons uh, arbitrarily and uh, now the question is what happens if the mechanical oscillator gets coupled to an optical cavity say the mechanical oscillator is in one photon state let us say this is our one photon state this is the ground state this is the two photon state this is the three photon states and so on then if uh, it is now coupled to an optical oscillator or an optical cavity then the mechanical oscillator which is we are assuming it to be in the uh, one phonon state it may go to the ground state uh, at a rate uh, at a transition rate say gamma down uh, gamma down due to the coupling with the optical oscillator on the other hand if the oscillator is already in the ground state uh, that is represented by this gate zero here if it is already in the ground state then there is a very small probability that it derives some energy from the optical cavity and transit to the one phonon state with a uh, with a rate uh, at a at a rate let us say gamma up for cooling it is obvious that the downward transition that is gamma down has to be greater than the upward transition rate now in general if a quantum system is coupled to some environment the interaction hamiltonian is given by uh, in this form so say the system operator is represented by a and the fluctuating environment is represented by the operator f here a is the system operator and f is the fluctuating operator fluctuating operator belonging to the environment here i am considering a general case and then we will apply this case after we discuss it we will apply it to our specific case to give you an idea you know that when uh, an atom and an electric field interacts the interaction hamiltonian is given by minus mu dot e mu dot is the dipole moment operator suppose we are considering a two level atom then mu dot is the say dipole moment operator and e e is the electric field operator so this is the interaction hamiltonian so similar way uh, we can talk about the general case in this form now the transition rate uh, within the system so we have this system a and uh, and the fluctuating environment is represented by this f so they are getting coupled to each other and that's why we are having this interaction hamiltonian here and within the system suppose we want to uh, know say how the system is transiting from some initial state i to some say final state f then this transition rate is given by the so-called fermi golden rule and this rate is represented by say gamma i to f or simply i can write it as gamma fi is equal to as per the fermi golden rule it is we are going from the initial state in the system to the final state f so this is the matrix element this is the probability of going from the initial state i to the final state f within the system so mod square will give you the probability then we have one by h cross square and we have to calculate the this spectrum of the fluctuating operator uh, at the frequency that i'm going to write it as omega which represents the uh, energy difference from the initial energy state of the system to the final energy state of the system divided by h cross so this is the formula this is known as the fermi golden rule and uh, this formula is applicable when the interaction between the system and the environment is weak 
so okay by the way you recall that uh, this spectrum omega sff omega is if you remember that this is nothing but the fourier transform of the correlator of this operator f so this is the fourier transformation you have to calculate and we'll see how to do that uh, for our specific case now in our case we have our interaction hamiltonian to be like this this is equal to minus s cross z into b plus b dagger into a plus a dagger all of them these are quantum operators because you remember we have replaced delta a that is the quantum fluctuation belonging to the optical cavity we replaced it by a and similarly the quantum fluctuation belonging to the mechanical system is represented by this simply replaced by b and here we have this our system this part is a system and we can take it as our environment we can say that our mechanical oscillator is surrounding by optical cavity which is here acting as the environment now using the fermi golden rule uh, we can write the rate uh, for example if we are going from the one phonon state in the system to the zero phonon state that is uh, and the system operator let me write it as s cross z b plus b dagger and this is the matrix element we have to take the mod square and one by h cross square and here we are going from the initial state to the final state so upper state to the lower state so this would be the downward transition so let us say it is gamma minus and we have this fluctuating environment represented by a plus a dagger so for the moment let me just write f here and we have we have to calculate sff and at frequency initial we are going from the higher energy state one phonon state to the zero phonon state so therefore this would be simply the uh, mechanical frequency of the uh, our system or the oscillator we have to evaluate omega at capital omega m right so uh, you see this part is easy to calculate because we know that when this annihilation operator operates on the one phonon state we will get simply zero and therefore because of this you can immediately see that this downward transition rate from here i will get the term z square and we have uh, of course only z square because h cross square will get cancelled out so we'll have z square and uh, we have to calculate the spectrum at uh, the oscillation frequency of the mechanical oscillator let us calculate it so here sff at omega is equal to capital omega m is equal to the fourier transformation of the uh, term a plus a dagger it is at time t and a plus a dagger at time t is equal to zero we have to calculate it and finally all the calculations has to be carried out at omega is equal to capital omega m now you know that this already as i said that this operator a is the quantum fluctuation corresponding to the optical mode and it is basically in the ground state so we have to calculate the expectation value of this particular term here a plus a dagger at time t and a plus a dagger at time t is equal to zero this we have to calculate with respect to the ground state because it is already in the optical oscillator is in the ground state because effectively it is at temperature zero as you know because the optical frequency is in the around 10 to the power 15 hertz or so so that's the reason we can write we can calculate it in the ground state now uh, if we break it uh, bre okay we will do this first if we break it we will get four terms and most of the terms will vanish except all terms will vanish except uh, as you, you will see that only term that will remain non-zero would be 
a of t and a dagger of 0 this would remain uh, this will remain non zero but rest of the terms will zero let me show how actually it's very trivial to see for example you have a dagger t and a of zero and because you are calculating it in the ground state so therefore you can immediately see that when this annihilation operator operates on the ground state you are going to get zero uh, similar way you will have a dagger t a dagger of zero that is also going to give you zero and then also you will uh, you can see uh, that uh, you will have also a of uh, t a of zero it would be equal to zero right so only term that would remain non-zero would be this one so we have to calculate this as so we'll be left out with only one term and we have to calculate the Fourier transformation of a dagger of t sorry this would be a of t it would be a of t a dagger of zero and dt evaluating at omega m let us do it but before we do that first we have to express this quantity express a of t in terms of in terms of a of zero and that we can do because we know the quantum Langevin equation uh, for the optical oscillator so that is a dot is equal to in the absence of mechanics i can write it as minus i delta kappa by 2 a minus square root of kappa a in and the solution is trivial and that is a of t would be equal to a of 0 e to the power i delta t minus kappa by 2 t and there would be terms belonging to the zero point fluctuation because of this but as you will see that if we take the average then this fluctuation part is going to uh, vanish and this we have written for t greater than zero and so therefore what we will have is this spectrum would be uh, minus infinity to plus infinity dt e to the power i from the Fourier part we have i omega and now here delta is there omega plus delta t minus kappa by 2 mod t uh, a of 0 a dagger of 0 now here i am taken mod t because um, i have taken from the t less than zero also is taken into account because the integration is from minus infinity to plus infinity so that's the reason we have put a mod sign here to take into both the cases so let us now work it out one thing you can immediately see that this quantity is simply equal to one right because uh, <coughs> it is uh, trivial to see uh, okay let me just show you we have a a dagger zero so you will get because of this you will get one and because of this when it operates on the bra part you will get one and that is equal to simply one so we are left only to evaluate this very simple integration it is dt e to the power i omega plus delta t minus kappa by 2 mod t in fact uh, you see that this i can evaluate it uh, very simply let me uh, okay, do it here i can take the integration from zero to infinity then i have to bother about the real part so you can see you have 2 into real part dt uh, e to the power i omega plus delta t minus kappa by 2 t that i can write and if i evaluate this integral simple algebra actually 
um, you will get it as kappa divided by omega plus delta uh, square plus kappa by 2 whole square therefore the transition rate downward transition rate remember we have to evaluate it at capital omega m so therefore i will have z square into kappa divided by omega m plus delta whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square exactly in the similar way we can calculate the upward transition rate gamma up and that would be equal to z square into kappa divided by omega m minus delta whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square now in this case we have evaluated the spectrum at the frequency minus omega m because here we are going from the zero phonon state to the one phonon state we can now plot the fluctuation spectrum as a function of frequency for delta less than zero because we are interested in cooling as you can see that this spectrum is lorentzian and it has a maximum at minus delta and the width is given by the cavity decay rate kappa and if we want to obtain the downward transition rate as you as we have already seen that we have to evaluate the spectrum at frequency omega is equal to plus omega m let us say we are interested in calculating the upper uh, downward transition rate then we have to evaluate it omega m so from here this distance in frequency is omega m and this will give us the downward transition rate on the other hand the upward transition rate can be obtained if the spectrum is evaluated at the other end that is at frequency minus omega m so this would be somewhere lying here in distance in frequency unit so this would be minus omega m so this is our gamma up it is clear that from this plot as well that the transition downward transition rate is higher than the upward transition rate let us now calculate the phonon numbers to which our mechanical oscillator settles down to the idea is to calculate the average phonon number and see if we can somehow suppress the phonon numbers to zero by optimizing the parameters of the optomechanical system achieving a pure ground state but firstly let us find out what is the uh, phonon number in the steady state in the steady state in the steady state the net flow of phonons from the upward state or yeah upward state to the downward state let me write here net flow of phonons from up state to down state must be balanced by net flow of phonons phonons from down state to up state then we will achieve the steady state and in terms of probabilities we can write it as say we are in the ground state that is the probability of being in the ground state is say p0 we are having in the ground state and corresponding probability is p0 and we go from the ground state to the up state and up state probability occupation probability is p1 and this is the one phonon state and so on we have other state but we are confining our discussion to the one phonon state and the ground state only so it would be p the net flow from of phonons from the up state to the down state would be p0 gamma up and it has to be balanced by now we are in the up state that is p1 and the rate of transition in the downward is given by gamma down you can write down the ratio of this upward transition and the downward transition as 
P1 divided by P0 as is evident from this expression. Now invoking the Boltzmann distribution for probabilities, P1 by P0 is equal to e to the power minus the energy difference between these two energy levels and that would be h cross omega m divided by kbt and from here we can immediately write that the ratio between the transition rate for the upward and the downward is equal to e to the power minus h cross omega m by kbt again we know what is the upward transition rate and the downward transition rate already we have derived the corresponding expressions for them so if we put those terms here and we'll get this ratio as delta plus omega m whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square divided by delta minus omega m whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square also uh, we know that the average number of phonons is given by this expression that is 1 divided by e to the power h cross omega m by kbt minus 1 and from here we can quickly write that e to the power minus h cross omega m by kbt is equal to n bar divided by n bar plus 1 so we then can write that this ratio n bar plus n bar divided by n bar plus 1 is equal to delta plus omega m whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square i'm just repeating here and we are we then we have delta minus omega m whole square plus kappa by 2 whole square okay so now let us optimize the parameters because our goal is to minimize the average number of uh, phonons so we have to minimize n bar so to do that we have to minimize the ratio so this implies that we have to minimize this ratio of gamma up and gamma down this ratio of gamma up by gamma down that means we have to concentrate on this expression or uh, then uh, you will see that i can then write if i invoke the resolved sideband regime if we work in the resolved sideband regime then i can write n bar by n bar plus one by the way resolved sideband regime we have in that regime our kappa has to be much more smaller than the resonance frequency of the mechanical oscillator and also we are going to take delta is equal to minus omega m and if i take that um, i can write this expression as kappa by 2 whole square divided by 4 omega m square as you can see i have just put delta is equal to minus omega m here and then uh, here i have kappa by 2 whole square and in we can write this as n bar plus 1 divided by n bar is equal to invoking the resolved sideband regime that means i can ignore this term and then i have here it will be 4 omega m square divided by kappa by 2 whole square and therefore from here you see that the optimized that means the minimum number of average number of phonons would turn out to be the ratio of kappa by omega m so this is the expression we are going to have now clearly if we want to have the phonon number to be much much less than one to get n bar to be much much smaller than one so that we can get the ground state of the mechanical oscillator we need to make kappa uh, has to be has to be very small lower the kappa or, or the cavity rate better is the uh, probability that we will reach into the ground state of the mechanical oscillator and lower kappa cavity decay rate means that 
we need to have a very high q cavity let me stop here for today in this lecture we have studied the linear response of the cavity optomechanical system around its steady state and which led us to the regime of linearized cavity quantum optomechanics then we also studied the quantum limit for the ground state cooling of the mechanical oscillator in the next lecture we are going to study various other phenomena related to cavity quantum optomechanics such as squeezing and uh, normal mode splitting and so on so see you in the next lecture thank you